excerpt from local newspaper. Ominous unknown killer still at large. After weeks of murders, the killer is still at large. After little evidence has been found, a young survivor of the killer's attack tells a story. I had a bad dream in the middle of the night and woke up, said the boy. I saw that the window was open, even though I could remember it being closed. It was so crazy. I crawled back into bed and was about to go to sleep when, in the ray of moonlight, I saw a face. It had black rimmed eyes, and its face was ghostly pale. And then for its mouth, a white smile that looked like it was ripped from ear to ear. Almost like the Joker. He then said something in a way only a madman could say. He said, Why is he my pencil? He then lunged at me with a super sharp pencil that he'd taken out from his nose. Then my mommy came in and threw a can of green beans at the killer and he escaped from the window. If any of you find the killer or see him, please contact the local authorities near you. Jeffy and his family have moved into a new neighbourhood. Jeffy's dad had gotten a promotion at work. Jeffy and Junior couldn't complain though. A new, better home, what wasn't there to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbours came round and introduced themselves. Hi, my name is Judith, I live across the street from you. She said, well, well, I just wanted to introduce myself and introduce my son. She turned around and called her son over. Target cans, these are our new neighbors. Suddenly, Jeffy couldn't help but look at the house next to theirs. There stood a girl with pigtails and ginger hair and glasses. She was watching him from her bedroom window. Cody said hi and went back to playing in the yard. Well, said Rose's mother, my name is Rose and this is my husband Marvin. And these are my sons Jeffy and Junior. Well, well, Cody's having a birthday party this weekend and we'd love for you and your family to come. Jeffy was about to interject but his mother said that they'd love to. Jeffy went up to his mom. Mommy, why don't you invite us? In case you ever notice, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeffy, we just moved here, Rose claimed. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. We're going to the party in that final. Jeffy asked his parents if they were fucking high and stormed up to his bedroom. Jeffy plopped down on his bed and looked up at the ceiling, when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as his stomach gurgling, and he decided to relieve himself and beat his diaper for a few minutes. Suddenly, he heard his father calling him down to get his stuff, but Jeffy called back and said, I don't have to. When Marvin called his name again, Jeffy decided that he wasn't in the mood to argue, so did as he was told. The next day, Jeffy went down to get breakfast and get ready for school. He suddenly got that weird feeling again. He knew his parents were dismissed as him need- needing to relieve himself, so he asked Junior about it. Junior, I have this weird feeling in my stomach. Junior? He was playing with a Thomas the Tank Engine toy, looked up and, and reassured his friend. It probably just nerved from moving into a new home. But things will get better. When my dad kicked me out of the house, it was my your parents to adopt me. Though I don't think your dad was too keen on the idea. For a moment, Junior reminisced on the time. He accidentally broke his dad's TV and got kicked out for it. Suddenly, his thoughts focused back to Jeffy. Now let's go to school. Jeffy was 
with reluctant but agreed with a friend. Jeffy and Junior waited at the bus stop when suddenly a boy sped up towards them on his skateboard and cartoonishly jumped over the two boys and landed beside them. Hey nerds! You new here? The boy demanded. Jeff and Junior stared at the boy. Yeah, my name's Jeffy. See, I got on my shirt. Jeffy! Jeffy pointed at his shirt, and the bully laughed coolly. Well, my name's Bully. I guess you can guess where I am. Suddenly, Bully punched Junior and, and stole his wallet. This made Jeffy mad. Oh, hell no! Give me back my friend's wallet, he demanded. Oh yeah? And what are you gonna do about it, retard? Bully sneered. This made Jeffy even more mad and he pounced on the bully. He bashed his face and kicked his stomach and twisted his arm. Jeffy then stabbed the bully's arm with a pencil. And when he was done, Junior looked at him in surprise. Jeffy! How? But before Jeffy could say anything, the bus came and the two of them fled the scene, not wake wanting to be caught. Meanwhile, the ginger-haired girl that Jeffy spotted earlier was once again watching what had happened. She was horrified at how badly the bully had been beaten up. Suddenly, her father, who was in a cop outfit, called her downstairs. She went down and explained what happened. While Jeffy and Junior were at school, they kept on thinking about what had just happened. Junior thought of it as his friend beating up some punk for him, but Jeffy thought of it as hurting someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but it made him happy. Suddenly, he got that strange feeling again. Jeffy, what the hell was that? Junior asked in amazement while the two of them were at home. I don't know, Junior, but I kind of like this. Junior gave Jeffy a strange look. What, you got kind of, some kind of sexual thrill out of it or something? No, no, nothing like that, Jeffy concluded. I just kind of like this. Suddenly, Jeffy could hear his dad screaming at them to come downstairs. The two boys headed downstairs and saw Jeffy's parents standing next to Officer Brooklyn guy. Jeffy! Marvin screamed. You started a fight, Jeffy! Ryan spoke up. Jeffy, this officer tells me that you got in a fight with a boy and that he was scabbed? Scabbed, son! Jeffy and Junior stared at each other. They didn't know what to say. Officer Brooklyn guy spoke up. Young man, we got reports that one of you brutally beat up a boy and then fled the scene. Have anything to say about that? Jeffy was about to say something, but Junior pulled out the pencil from his pocket. I did it, officer. I'm the one who beat up that little punk. I have the marks to prove it. He pointed to the punch wounds on his face. All right, you're coming with me. It's a year in Jovie for you. Police officer placed Junior's hands behind his back and took him away. Junior, no! Tell them I did it! Jeffy protested. Jeff Jeffy, stop! Marvin started to say. There's no need to lie anymore. We know it's Junior. The ginger haired girl watched everything from her window. She heard Jeffy's protest and felt sorry for him. She wanted to help him. But she wasn't sure how. The past few days were bleak for Jeffy. He couldn't bear to see the disappointment in his parents' eyes. He had no friends, no one he could talk to. It was just him and his loneliness. One day, when he was in school, he sat at his desk and saw a note in front of him. He picked it up and read, Dear Jeffy, I know Junior is innocent. I'm putting in a testify as a witness. Yours kindly, Penelope. Jeffy decided to slip the note in his pocket. 
He suddenly saw the ginger haired girl looking at him. He winked at her. He suddenly had that feeling again. And, th and through the corner of his eye, he could see what looked to be a paler version of himself. Only it had a joker type of smile and black rimmed eyes. Suddenly, he blinked and the figure was gone. The next morning, Marvin and Rose entered Jeffy's bedroom. Rose opened the curtains and brightly said, Wake up, Jeffy! Today's the day! Jeffy was confused. He'd been so absent-minded about Junior that he hadn't realised what the day held. It's the day of Cody's party, Rose chirped. Mommy, I don't think going to a party would be a good idea after... Jeffy trailed off. Jeffy, we both know what happened, but I think this party is going to be the thing that brightens up this family. Jeffy tried to protest, but you didn't even see what happened. But Rose ignored him and Marvin scolded him to get dressed into something fancy and they both went downstairs. Jeffy looked in his wardrobe and found a tattered white hoodie. He put it on and went downstairs. Marvin had a look of disgust on his face and said, You're wearing that? Go and get changed at once! Jeffy said, I don't have to. And not wanting to get into an argument, the parents gave in and left for the neighbor's house. Once they got there, Judith opened the front door and greeted them. Oh, you made it! Come inside! And Jeffy, the kids are in the backyard. The family entered the house, and Jeffy went straight into the back garden. Once he was there, Jeffy had a look around and saw all of these kids were wearing cowboy hats. He heard one boy go, This party is so great, me! Then he heard a voice say, Hey dude, hey dude, I'm Joseph. Do you want to play? Jeffy saw a boy wearing a green top and a cowboy hat. No, I'm good, Jeffy replied. The kid named Joseph made a puppy dog face. Please. Jeffy just replied with, I don't have to, and was about to walk inside when he heard what sounded like a skateboard. Then a figure cartoonishly jumped over the fence and landed in front of Jeffy. It was Butley. Hey, retard, did you miss me? He sneered. Look, I already broke your arms, and you got my friend sent to do me. So I think we're even, Jeffy retorted. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have beaten the shit out of me to the point where I might have been incapacitated, but I'm back and I'm going to take you down. Bully, Bully pounced towards Jeffy and started punching him. Jeffy managed to kick the bully off, but the delinquent pulled out a gun from his pocket. Where did you get a gun? Jeffy asked, astonished. I just managed to get my hands on one, Bully confessed. He looked at the crowd, who were all in fear. Nobody interrupts or just will fly, he shouted. Meanwhile, Penelope was on her phone when she suddenly heard gunshots ringing out. She looked out of her window and saw that the boy she tried to help was fighting the bully once again. She was in shock when she saw that the bully had smashed a vodka bottle all over him. Oh my god! she screamed. She didn't know what to do. Meanwhile, back at the party, Bully grabbed the alcohol-drenched Jeffy inside and slammed him to the kitchen floor. Jeffy ran up upstairs to the bathroom to hide, but Bully followed him. Suddenly, Jeffy was grabbed by the shirt and thrown against the shelf that held the chemicals. A thing of bleach, bleach dropped on the floor and landed on Jeffy. 
The bleach poured all over him and Jeffy could feel his skin prickling. Bully laughed cruelly. What's so funny? Jeffy demanded. What's funny? That you're covered in alcohol. Suddenly, Bully lit a match. And before Jeffy could do or say anything, Bully threw the match on top of him. The alcohol mixed with the bleach ignited the flames and Jeffy was screaming, walking in fun eyes. Penelope heard screaming. She suddenly saw Jeffy run outside. The flames burning him alive. Oh my god, Bully, what did you do? Penelope exasperated herself. She grabbed the fire extinguisher and rushed outside to Cody's backyard before spraying the extinguisher all over Jeffy, putting her out the flames and, and rendering him unconscious. Darkness. That's all there was. Jeffy could feel he had tubes on his wrists. He lifted his hands to his face and felt bandages over it. Suddenly, he felt hands touch his face and the bandages were removed. He saw the worried looks on his parents' on his parents' faces. Jeffy! Oh my god, we were so worried! Rose confessed. Then Marvin started to speak. We have some good news. Somebody was willing to testify against that bully who did this. And Junior is getting released tomorrow. You should thank my daughter Penelope, the doctor told Jeffy's parents. She managed to put out the fire and testify against the bully. Jeffy's mind was lost. He suddenly started to feel his face. It had a kind of leathery feel. He grabbed a mirror from the bedside table and looked into it. His skin had somehow gone ghostly pale from where he had been burnt. His hair had gone from dark brown to jet black. He suddenly started to laugh maniacally. Marvin and Rose looked at each other, concerned. Is he going to be all right, Doctor? Marvin asked. Oh yeah, you may want to give him some medication and psychological treatment. If he starts acting differently, Rose turned to Jeffy. Sweetie, your face isn't that bad. It's okay. Okay, Jeffy started to shout. <laughs> it's beautiful! It goes perfectly with me! Yeah, you may want to take him home now, the doctor concluded. His parents nodded and guided their son away from the ward, not knowing that it was their last night on earth. Later that night, Rose woke up to hear crying coming from their bathroom. She went to go and check it out, and saw her son facing the mirror. Honey, are you okay? Rose asked her son. Jeffy turned around and saw to, and Rose saw to her horror that he had carved a smile into his face. It was almost ear to ear. I couldn't keep smiling, mommy. Jeffrey confessed. It hurt for a while. Now I can smile forever. Rose was stunned in fear. She didn't know what to say. But somehow her son had managed to burn off his eyelids. How? Is all she could say. Am I a good boy, mommy? Jeffrey asked with a gruff voice. Child like innocence to it. Yes. Yes, honey. Now let me go get your father so we can see your face. And we can have pizza for dinner if we didn't eat. And she was off. Rose ran to her bed and shook Marvin awake. 
Marvin, Marvin, wake up! Come and look at Jeffy! Marvin grumbled and eventually woke up. Suddenly, he saw Jeffy and screamed in horror. Jeffy! What did you do? Bad boy! You're having green beans for tonight! Suddenly, Jeffy let out a shuddering breath and growled, Mommy, you lied. Daddy, you called Jeffy a bad boy. Suddenly, he removed the pencil from his nose and stabbed it into Marvin's neck. He then removed it and stabbed it into, into Rose's forehead. Jeffy snuck into Junior's bedroom. Then he whispered in his ear, Junior, you're free. Junior grumbled and said, What are you talking about? Jeffy smiled and said, We'll see you in the morning. I just wanted you to know that you've been my best friend. Junior chuckled in his sleep and said, Thanks, man. I just go to sleep. Jeffy nodded and climbed out of Junior's window before wandering into the night. He had some business to take care of. Penelope was sleeping when she had a crash from downstairs. She got up and wondered if her dad had been drinking again. She went downstairs and turned on the kitchen light. And to her horror, she could see her parents tied to a chair and with smiles carved into their faces. She was about to scream when suddenly she heard a voice whisper behind her. Surprise! And she was knocked out. Jeffy looked down at the girl. Even though he didn't know anything about her, she couldn't kill her. She was too beautiful for that. And she, and she saved him and Junior. He had something better in mind. Penelope woke up. She was in the dining room at the end of the table and she was tied up next to her parents. Her dad was on the left and her mum was on the right. They had smiles carved on their faces. She faced the front and all of a sudden she was face to face with the boy she saved. His skin was bleached white, and his smile was ear to ear. His eyes rimmed with black rings. Well, what do you want? Penelope demanded with fear. Jeffy chuckled cruelly. I owe you, Penelope. You helped me get payback on the bully, and you got my friend out of Juby. I'm going to make you beautiful. Suddenly, Penelope smelled gasoline all over the floor. What are you going to do to me? Penelope demanded. Jeffy lit the match and observed it. He held it up near his nose, but suddenly he dropped the match and started to be a diaper, not knowing what he'd just done. Suddenly, the flames ignited and Penelope was a little flame. Jeffy screamed along with her, uh, with her and called the ambulance before fleeing the scene. Penelope screamed in pain. All she felt was fear, pain and anger. Suddenly, her vision went to black. Penelope woke up in the hospital. A nurse went over to her bed. Oh, Penelope, you're awake! How do you feel? Penelope didn't know what to say. She felt her face. And the nurse spoke up again. Here's a gift for you. It came in the mail. Penelope looked down and saw what looked like a porcelain mask with pitch black eyes and a long black wig. She scratched out her bandages and removed them before staring in the mirror 
her skin was crisp brown and her hair was gone. How am I crisp brown, but if you bleach white? She asked aloud. Suddenly, Penelope saw a note on Reddit. Dear Penelope, I'm sorry I failed in making you beautiful. I tried finding the paint to paint the floors, but all I found was gasoline, and I couldn't find any makeup to make you look pretty like me. So here's a gift from me to you. Thank you for your help. We love Jeffy. Do you think of my shark, Jeffy? Penelope's blood boiled. She felt nothing but rage. She ripped off the bandages and placed the mask over her face and placed the wig over her head. She knew what she needed to do. Jeffy's fate was sealed. And she would woo the gay. He'd ruined her life. She left the hospital that night with the mission to kill Jeffy the Killer.